So we know that there are certain things that you can do with animals, and there are certain things that you cannot. There are certain restrictions that are placed on your ownership rights. But there is a difference in how we perceive companion animals versus farm animals. So if I were to ask you, could I crush a dog, most people would say no. But if I were to ask you, could I crush a mouse, could I crush a rat, many of you would say yes. So we know that how we treat animals depends on what type of animal we're referring to. How do we make the determinations as to what's permissible and what is not? Important lesson that I would like you to take from this is that property is less about things than it is about relationships. Relationships to things. So what proprietary laws do is structure people's choices. They dictate people's relationships to things and structure their choices accordingly. There's this concept known as a bundle of rights. Many of you have been to Albert Park, many of you have sat on a bench. There's a park bench, that park bench does not belong to you, but you have the right to make use of that bench. It is public property. You can sit, you can sleep on this bench. Can you paint this bench? No. There are limitations. We have a bundle of rights, and some rights fall within the bundle, and some will fall outside. And these rights we do not possess. So when you're thinking of animals, or children, or land, whatever it happens to be, begin thinking in terms of bundles of rights. There are certain rights you possess, and there are certain rights you do not. And these are determined by law. And what these laws do is structure relationships of people to things. The relationship of the owner as well as the relationship of the non-owner. Property rights inevitably lead to controversy. Think of it in terms of food. Instead of just thinking of land, think in terms of food. Everyone needs food to survive. Everyone needs shelter. So the controversy arises when we're referring to the necessities of life. Different parties are competing over a good. And how that good is regulated, whether that good becomes available to a large number of people or a small number of people, will depend on the laws that we put in place. How we determine which laws we put into place depends on the society that we grow up in. Property is inherently cultural. Now in New Zealand, we have built our proprietary regime on the musings of John Locke. Now what John Locke said is that God gave the world to humans in common for their use. According to John Locke, you acquire proprietary rights to land by laboring that land. But John Locke also said that there are limitations on your ability to acquire proprietary rights, and that is dictated by availability for everyone else. What John Locke was trying to avoid were situations of monopolies, situations where we have a concentration of proprietary rights in too few hands. Maori, Tikanga, had their own understanding of proprietary rights. So Māori did not feel 
that the land belonged to them, but rather that they belonged to the land. So this idea of laboring the land and acquiring proprietary rights made no sense within a Tikanga perspective. But Locke's theory was applied to Aotearoa, it was applied to New Zealand, and we know that vast expanses of land were transferred over to the British settlers. What the British are communicating is that there is one proprietary regime. There is one way in which land rights are acquired. And since they were working off the writings, the theories of John Locke, that involved the attachment of labor, the fixing of labor to land for that acquisition to happen. We know that property laws will dictate, will structure our relationship to certain goods. These goods can be tangible, but they can also be intangible. For instance, today's performance. And these rights that I possess over my performance are determined by the Copyright Act. Because the Copyright Act grants me rights over this performance. And by doing so, what the Copyright Act is also doing is structuring your relationship to my performance. Meaning there are certain things that you're permitted to do but it also places limitations on what you're permitted to do. How do we decide which goods are to be made into property? A finite resource or an infinite resource? So a finite resource versus an infinite one? Based on human um, need. Based on human need. Placed on the value that people place on it. The value that people place on it. Easy answer. Law. So law determines what is considered property and what is not. And since it's society technically that makes laws, we have to look at society and say, what does society value? What does society privilege? And then we have to look at what lawmakers are doing. Because at the end of the day, lawmakers are the ones deciding what is property and what is not. The fact that I own proprietary rights over this performance is a political decision by the state of New Zealand. It's a political decision. It's a choice that's been made. So what we have to understand is that there's a balancing act that is always underway between different parties and different interests. In trying to understand what gets protected versus what does not, you have to look at the theoretical perspectives that we considered in Part B. And understanding what is protected versus what is not is going to vary depending on which concept of law you apply. Here's a question that I'd like you to reflect on. What do property laws do? Is lawmaking for sale? Yes. 